what's going on up in this hizzy house. In this hizzy house. In this hibbity dibbity, hibbity dabbity, hibbity fabbity. In this hibbity hop 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 hibbity house. In the Monday Night Raw ratings, the highest they've been in two years. We're going to talk about the significance of this. Because here's the thing. Here's the thing. Although it's true that every single time there's a pay-per-view the very next night on Monday Night Raw normally, the ratings go up because it's the night after a pay-per-view. For the first time ever in the last two years, the ratings were dropping sometimes after a pay-per-view. So they would do a pay-per-view or a special premium event, whatever they're calling them now, and um, after that the raw rating would actually stay around the same and not increase, which is weird, except around SummerSlam, Royal Rumble, and WrestleMania. Um, so the one good thing you can take from this situation here is that the the, the rating went up, um, you know, highest in two years, so even higher than the last uh, post-SummerSlam show. Once again, the negative to that, in my opinion, is that they put on a pretty decent show or an okay show, but they really should have put on a spectacular show. So I would have rather them put on a historic type of night rather than um, just kind of like a little bit of an enhancement on the run of the mill. You know, the, like people acting like Raw was a 9 out of 10 the other night are idiots. I don't know what's going on with that out there, but people are doing it, some of them. And it's really wrong. It's wrong. It's just not accurate enough. It's it's a mistake. Um, you know, it's it's not it's not valid in my opinion. But uh, you know, we had some steps in the right directions last night. But here's the problem: uh, a lot of people that watch aren't going to return because they're going to be like, "Oh, that wasn't that much different." You know, to us it was because the triple threats in the United States title, but. I don't know, man. To some casual people returning, I don't think it made that much of a difference. I still think that I think some are going to drop off. Obviously, next week, I would expect now that we got a what, what we got what do we get a two point four rating? I don't even remember now. Two point two or two point four? Uh, let me let me grab that rating again. Um, the raw rating was was two four or two five or two two? I can't remember. Um, let's see. Let's see. 2.2, 2.2. So, you know, it's the night after SummerSlam. I said this was going to be must-see TV. Said it was going to be a big event. Said it was going to be one of the biggest increases of the year. Um, other, I, other than WrestleMania, post-WrestleMania, I thought. But it actually beat out... I mean, it really did well. You know, Monday Night Raw rating really did well. And un unfortunately, again, like I said, I think it would have been better if Triple H had come out at the beginning... The ropes were different or something was different. Maybe they didn't have time for all that. You know, the lighting, they did something to say like, or, you know, they really needed to do that and they didn't, but you know, you know, it was a, I gave this rating. What I, what I can say is this best rating in two years from the raw viewership, best viewership in two years. And it was my best rating I think of the last two years at a five, five. So a 5.5 out of 10 is not what I'm looking for though. That's like a 2.5 out of five stars or so. I don't want that. I want higher, but it was a good start. It just wasn't enough to really amp me up and freak me out and make me go, Oh my God, it's the whole, there's a whole new thing. It's a whole new game. Dunkachino, you know, um, so I, you know, again, like I said, this was sort of a stalemate almost to me. It was like, or it was, it's like, here's a little bit of good, but you know, you know what I said about raw last night. I, I thought maybe that the show was going to rate a two, two million. I thought maybe it would be, it, we'd hit two to 2.1. I think if you go back a couple of weeks ago, I thought maybe uh SummerSlam post show cause it's SummerSlam the raw after SummerSlam is usually the second or third highest rated raw of the year unless something special is going on and certainly with all the hype about what's going on here and Triple H taking over they had that going too so it looks like to me 
next week, if next week is even more run of the mill, right? If next week is still a slight improvement like this week and uh, they, they just do a few things better, but it's really not much different, then you're going to see the viewership decline uh, next week. So look for next week them to be around maybe 2 million, maybe even lower. I don't know. So 2.2 2 this week, I'd say about 2 or 1.9 next week. And then if that show isn't very good next week, then you're going to have people saying, oh, man, this was this is all this, whatever. I'm, I can't take this anymore. So you're going to have people tuning out at that point, you know? So and then you're going to end up back to the regulars who are still watching at the one point, you know, eight the next week, then the one point sixes are back and then we're back to where we were. So it's really going to take, like I said, it's going to take an effort to do shocking things, to do fun things, to do creative things, to do out of the box stuff, over the top stuff, whatever you got to do to be crazy and get an audience. I, I don't think that's what they did last night. I think they did a really good job though of promoting some wrestling, like actual wrestling in the ring, like trying to have the tournament with the United States championship with the triple threat matches leading to a, you know, another match. That was great. I like that. And we all know that was one of the best matches of the night. And one of the best, you know, things I've seen on raw in a while was the AJ Styles finish of that match. And so, but a lot of other stuff was just run-of-the-mill crap. And there wasn't any crazy promos, really, or anything like that either. So it was really just like a couple of matches were better than usual. And we've seen that before. Remember when they said there's going to be change in Triple H and Vince McMahon and everybody stood in the middle of the ring and they said, man, there's going to be all this change. We hear you. And then for like a week or two, Ricochet and... All these people were called up and they came out there and they wrestled their asses off for a few weeks. And, and like everybody was like, oh, my God, there's a change coming. And then sooner or later, you know, it went to shit again. You guys remember that? You know, so, we're, you know, it wasn't that big. A, you know, this this has happened before. We've sort of seen this uh, before. So that's why I'm not like freaking out. The, because what was what the hell was that different besides the wrestling? You know, some of the wrestling, not all of it, some of it. So, you know, and I'm not here to crap on it either because it was the best show that my, my best, one of my best ratings in the last two years. And then it got one of the best ratings in the last two years. So we're on to something there, you know, if they can put a show as good as that together every week, I mean, maybe they'll win back a hundred thousand people and they'll get to two, they'll get to 1.8s every week. But again, you you need more than that, man. And if you can really do more than that, you can have exciting create. And I see, I, I see, I'm upset. I, I'm sorry. Like I know that a lot of people are happy and they love this and stuff. I'm upset because I feel like I said this last night, right? How how true was this? I said they have their they probably have their biggest audience since WrestleMania in, uh, of the year on Raw tomorrow on tonight on Raw, and all they did was they they did better in some matchups. But that's it. They really didn't do anything crazy or shocking or try to like reset the show and let everybody know this is a new era, something new's coming. And they didn't do that. I don't care about slow burn and it's coming and baby steps and blah, blah, blah. Again, this is the same mistake that they made uh, after WrestleMania with Stone Cold Steve Austin and the same mistake that they made after the Raw, or Stone Cold, whatever it was. It was Raw's 1,000th or 2 millionth episode or whatever the hell it was. And they brought Stone Cold out at the end. And then they got like a huge rating. They got like a 3 million viewers a couple of years ago, whatever it was. And I said, man, the next week they better kill it. And then next week they came out and they did the same shit show they normally do. And I said, well, there goes that, man. You just got all those people. You, you just got a million people to watch your show because of Stone Cold Steve Austin. And they tune in the next week, right? And they tune in that night even. And they, they don't really see that much. They go, wow, Stone Cold was cool, but wow, these new people suck. That's what they thought. That's what they thought. That's what they said. 
And that's what happened. And they tuned out the next week. And then even more tuned out the week after that. And then in three or four weeks, they were back to the same numbers exactly. They lost They lost every single one of the extra one million who tuned in to see Stone Cold on that Raw special. And not only did they lose every single one of those new one million people that were watching, but then they began to lose their regular viewership as well which they had already been doing, but they just continued back to that. So you had a spike in ratings for three weeks based off of, oh, Stone Cold's back. Let's check out the new era of these people. Oh, they suck. All right, I'm out of here. Well, that's what happened last night. Last night, 600, oh no, it was 2.2. Last night, 400,000 people tuned in that had stopped watching for the last year. For the last year or more, 400,000 people tuned in to the post-SummerSlam Monday Night Raw to see what was going to happen, and they got pretty good wrestling and nothing really that insane or crazy or anything that would make them go, wow, this show is, I got to be here every week. No way. They didn't get that. Maybe about maybe 50,000 of them thought, this is actually pretty cool. I'm going to watch next week. But that's about it. Nobody, no, most of those people did not tune in and think, wow, I've got to watch next week. They did not. I guarantee it. The ratings will tell you that too. Now, here's the thing. There are going to be some people who, who watch again next week, right? There's going to be probably 100, 200, 300,000 people that watch next week because of this week. So now if something doesn't happen next week and we get a, a run-of-the-mill show next week and even more run-of-the-mill show next week, even less going on than this week, well, you can damn sure bet that those ratings will crash right back down and start dropping again like they had been. You know what I mean? So that's not good. That's not good. So I'm. this is why I'm upset. I'm not happy. If I was the leader of this company, I'd be angry. I'd be like, really, guys? We had a half a million people tuning in that don't normally watch anymore, and that's what we did? Like, we couldn't d- have done better? You did a little better than la- than the other weeks, than we've done, but that was all. Like, we couldn't, you know what I mean? You should have made a statement. This was not a statement show. People keep saying, you know, Triple H leaves a statement or makes a statement. I mean, not really. Triple H improves some things. That should be the title. It's not Triple H makes a statement. It's Triple H improves some things. That's what he did. Triple H improves some things. But you need you need a statement. You need a statement, and there isn't one. There's no statement. I would have had Stephanie McMahon come out and tell everybody about how they were, she was going to lead everybody into the new whatever. There's a new era here. There's a new thing coming. And you know what I would have done? I would have Bailey and her three cronies, or whatever they're her lackeys, Bailey and EO Sky and everybody. I would have had them come out and beat up Stephanie McMahon and kick Stephanie McMahon's ass in the ring to start Raw. To start Raw. You have the three women, and then and then Bianca Belair runs down to the ring, and then there's a whole thing, and they're they're trying to get the doctors, and Stephanie is pissed, and just you know they're losing their minds and chaos, and the cameras all over the place, and Stephanie is, you know, hurt in the ring. Maybe Stephanie's bleeding in the ring, even better. And then uh, I would have uh, I would have you know in the first the second hour beginning I would have Bianca cut her promo then have those girls come out again and then Stephanie comes back from the hospital or Stephanie or alerts you know whatever the hell and she, and she uh, makes the match with Bianca Belair and Io Sky for the main event so that little touch that little touch of Stephanie McMahon getting the shit beat out of her to start Raw would have been fun would have been exciting. It would have been like, wow, whoa, whoa, what's going on here? You know, think of like, you know, when Triple H reformed DX after WrestleMania 14. You look to your friends. You look to your blood. You look to the click. That's what we needed. And that would have been a shocking opener. Stephanie McMahon getting laid out by these three women. And guys, anyway, it's good to be here with you guys uh, tonight for a little bit. I probably won't be here too long, but, you know, good to be on here. And uh, how's everybody doing? Is everybody a corpse tonight or what's going on? Click that like button, man. Well, again, we need 100 likes. We need 100 likes to feel sexy. 
Drop 100 likes if you can. Whatever. Can't even get 100 likes. What the fuck's wrong with us? I mean, I get it. You know? Um, super chats are on. You can do a super chat if you'd like. Uh, if you can't do a super chat, you can do a Streamlabs link for the donations are above there. If you want to say something, do something, or make a move, uh, up top is where to do that. And if uh, not, at least uh, click that like button, man, and uh, leave a like if you can. At least a like, you know? That'd be cool. Um, trying to navigate here because someone did send me a question on Twitter here. Let me just go to this. Let me see what, what, what we're saying here. Let me see. Yeah, I you know, I, I saw the... Uh, I love the Carmelo fadeaway. You know, I've always liked that. And uh, tonight, you know, he did a really good... Uh, the guy that was selling when he hit him with the fadeaway and that thing that I retweeted out, God damn, is it good. You know what I love about the new Botchamania too is Bot Botchamania went in on fucking Jericho to start that Botchamania video. Like they went after Jericho a little bit because you know Jericho recently talked about how one of the things he hates the most is the word botch. He's like, there's no such thing as a fucking botch, and he was losing his mind about it. Bonjour, it's the fish. Great. The final Where is it? Botch. Watch. I saw this podcast too. The, the thing, the, the fucking word I hate the most that fans use is botch. Uh -huh. Oh, you botched that one. Shut your fucking mouth. There's no such thing as a botch. This is a live show. Mm -hmm. Mistakes happen because why? Because you were human beings and we're live. If it's a movie. Wait, so there's, wait a minute. So there's mistakes, but there's not botches? Listen, I love Chris Jericho to death. I really fucking love this guy. I really do. And I love that he protects everybody and goes after dumb people. But uh, there, there's botches, bro. Because there's mistakes. He just said it. He just said, yeah, there's mistakes. And, you know, well, that's a botch. Mistake. Botch. That's what it means. You just admitted that. <laughs> so Jericho does not like the word botch, even though it means mistake. And he just said there's mistakes. I've... But I get him saying, like, people trying to tease wrestlers about you botched or botched. Eh, fuck you. You couldn't do this shit. That part, I get that. That, I, I don't mind that. Him, you know, being a wrestler and being like, yo, fuck you. You can't do what I do. He's right about that. So I, I like that. But he is wrong about there's no botches. Okay, yeah, there is. You just said there is. Botch. Uh -huh. Oh, you botched that one. Shut your fucking mouth. There's no such thing as a botch. This is a live show. Mm-hmm mistakes happen because why because you were human beings and we're live if it's a movie i bet you there's a million mistakes in every movie and you take two take five take 20 take mm -hmm. 50 we have one take so if someone falls down you fucked up fuck you i'll punch you in your fucking face for saying that <laughs> oh my god bro <laughs> he was mad that day i don't know what happened but i get it Jericho was not a happy person in during that interview. So Jericho says, there ain't no botches, motherfuckers. There ain't no fucking botches, bro. Don't you fucking dare say botch. You pieces of shit. Don't you fucking dare say that I botched. I didn't botch shit. You know who botched the other day when fucking Schlong Ross and fucking... Goddamn, uh, whatever the fuck his name is, Bill Bahati and Sean Ross uh, met up and didn't fight each other. They were like, yeah, fuck you, fuck you, my kid's here, fuck you, do something, no, you do something, let's go outside, no, fucking do it. Uh. That was funny. Now, like I said, I talked to, uh, I talked to Bill and got his perspective on it the other day. He said that Sean Ross started yelling at him and came up to him. But I don't know. That's what he said. And then Brian Zane told me he did film it. So Brian and, and Sean Ross are both kind of SJW friends. So it sounds like they kind of planned like ambushing him and then calling him a racist and everything. I don't know. I don't know what he's done. That's I, You know, I, I know that Bill is out, out there, but I don't know what he's done that's racist or homophobic 100%. I don't know. 
but I, you know, these are guys that I feel like they just call anybody that. So I, I can't really tell, but you know, Bill Bahati told me that he, he didn't want to fight in there because he wanted to get arrested because he was with his kid and he could lose his kid and you know, something passport. I don't know. So he was trying to get him to go outside, but I don't know. No, everyone's a pussy as far, but you know, everybody's a pussy, but you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I don't know why people hate each other so much. Yeah. You, you know, usually when someone hates me that much, if, if they hate me and we don't really have a reason to be beefing or having a fight, like even fucking me. And even though Sean Ross doesn't like me and says, you know, says that my viewers are awful and stuff like that and says, my viewers are scumbags and f fucking whatever you guys are, you know, even though he says th those things, it's like, if I saw him, I wouldn't be like, yo, I'm going to kill you. You know, it's, I'd just be like, oh, there's that guy. You know, if anything, I'd think, oh, maybe he wants to say hi and, you know, talk it over for a second and, you know, fix it. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe we can chat about it and be like, yo, it's, you know, that's shit stupid. Let's stop doing that. Why do you think this? And then if he still was fucking ridiculous, I mean, then I get pissed though. You know, then, then something might go wrong for him. You know, but I, I don't get, I don't, I don't get why you would, you know, you'd want to really have this confrontation or whatever, you know, over not over just nothing really. Like, I don't know what it is. So really what it comes down to me is that I, 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 I can only assume this. I could be very wrong. I really could be, but I can only assume that Sean Ross did this with Bill for SJW points. Like the only reason why, you know, he yelled at him and flipped out and was like, you're a racist and a homophobe, Bill Bahati. I'm assuming that the only reason he did it is because he wanted like women and SJWs and people to see that he is virtuous. I got to believe that's the only reason it, what other reason would there be? You know, I mean, unless you really believed that Bill Bahati was some kind of Nazi person, you know, but do you really think Bill Bahati is a Nazi, you know, or, or whatever? So otherwise it's, why would you go up and scream and try to fight a guy? You know, I talked to Kevin Castle about this and, you know, after, after, you know, going through what was going on. Uh, Sean Ross Sapp yelled at Kevin Castle. So now he's yelling at Kevin Castle. This fucking guy's in, like, dude, like, you know, I, w I wish Sean Ross Sapp would just do a fucking stream with everybody on this and just be like, and like, try to like reset and be like, all right, I'm going to stop being like this. It, and I hope I'll, will you guys stop being like this? And then maybe everybody will get along again. But this is so weird, man. This is bizarre. Like Kevin Castle was, was kind of like, he, Kevin Castle was saying it was it was a shame. Like, uh, yeah, man, it's a shame to see these guys fight like this. You know, it's just wrestling and it's just a convention and stuff like that. Why why is everybody going to get like this? That's basically what Kevin said. And then Sean Ross says, weird, you're out here subtweeting, though. Talk to me like an adult, Kevin. Why does Sean Ross Sapp talk to people like they're fucking retarded children? By the way, Kevin Castle is like a fucking man. Dude, I, I fucking dare you to fuck with Kevin Castle in real life. Like, I would love to see Schlong Ross Sapp say this to Kevin Castle's fucking face in real life. Like, this is weird behavior. All Kevin Castle said was, it's a shame to see these guys do this. Like, why would they, why act like this? You know, it's just too bad. You know? Like, I... And then you say, weird, you're subtweeting, talk to me like an adult. You mean like how you talk to other people like an adult? Oh, wait, you block people and then call them racist or fucking homophobes? You just call everyone a racist or a homophobe and block them and then make up that their audience attacks you. Like, you're fucking weird. If you think bigotry and racist bullshit and threats that he made deserve a pass, fuck you too. Which ones? What threats? What racism? What bigotry? What are you talking about? Not that I don't not believe that, though, because, you know, 
like I said, I don't know. I don't know if they're, that's true. He might be right, and there's something we don't know, but I don't know. From what I'm being told, you know, Sean just calls everybody this. He just calls everybody fucking names. If he doesn't like you, he says you're... Dude, he says you guys... He says my audience assault him. He said that to me in a DM. He DM me. Sean Ross Sapp DM me and said you guys uh, are toxic people. But then his fans tell me they're going to kill my family. But you know what? They're not anyone's fans. They're just trolls who are trolling everybody. And he's an idiot and doesn't understand that. That's why I don't... You know what I mean? It's like when a troll says something to him, like he says it's me. But when people say to me that he says to kill my family, I don't think that's real because I'm not a fucking moron. But I guess Sean Ross Sapp is a fucking moron. Like the guy's a fucking moron. He wants to see people hurt. Like that's the thing is he would call people like this, that, and me. He would call other people like that bigots and homophobes and weird shit that he just makes up because he's a scumbag. But he actually is the one that wants to see people kill themselves over bullying because he bullies people. You know, he's got a huge audience and all he has to do is say things and people all believe it. He's got a massive group of people that will, that will take out someone's life and he don't care because he's a bad, that's a bad person. You don't do that to people. You know what I mean? That's fucked up, bro. You got a massive fucking dangerous audience if you want to, you know? And Kevin Castle was like, who, what, what are you going to do about it? You know what I mean? And I'm like, yeah, you're right. And people like JD support him. Uh, and you know what's weird is this guy and other people didn't support JD when the WWE people were bullying JD. And I call it bullying because all JD said was that Alexa Bliss was fucking terrible in bed and he made comments. Yeah, he made some weird comments like that were weird. I think they were weird. I think he has a weird fucking sexual hatred for women or something. I don't know what's up with JD. But that doesn't mean that, oh, I want to go on Twitter now and tell my million followers the you know tweet this video of JD because an account called GD sent it to me you know it's like you're, you so now this guy so his parents got death threats his parents got doxed he got in he got fucking death threats all these things way more than what happened to Alexa Bliss as opposed to from him now now yes that stuff does happen to wrestlers no doubt about it of course it does people are sick but that happened as a direct result of her calling him out because she didn't like his bad language about her, you know? So it's like, so what? Someone says something goofy about you, you know? And I, and I don't mind responding because, hey, you know, you're going to respond, you know what I mean? Because you're going to be upset and you're going to be like, oh, you know, like, fuck this, you know? But to fucking, like, like spend all day, like, showing everybody and telling everybody about it and whatever... Like, that's crazy, man. I think what she did sucks. I, you know what I mean? So, like, what what Alexa did to JD is actually worse. Even though JD said some, like, I guess disgusting stuff about her, if you want to say that, it was a joke. I don't think it was disgusting because I don't think it was real. It was weird, kind of, and like, okay. But it was a joke. You know, it's not like he was tweeting at her. You know, it's not like he tweeted at her, hey, I bet you suck at bed, you bitch. Like, that'd be weird, right? To tweet that at her and tweet all her fa all his fans and say, and then make a video t saying that, like, and telling everybody to go tweet her. That'd be weird. That'd be when you're kind of, like, getting into some kind of weird territory. But all he did was give his opinion on things and make a joke about stuff. So what? But you actually tweeted out, like, help me, and then that person got doxxed, and then their parents got attacked and stuff. That's what Sean Ross does. These people want to see somebody kill themselves over bullying. Like, they, like you know what I mean? Like, Bill, whatever. I, I don't know. I don't know how bad Bill Bahati is or, or whatever. I know that I had an exchange with him a long time ago, and we did not get along, and I thought he was, I thought he was a real bad person. I said that, too. He really does get under your skin. But... You know, to hide behind like these just labels of isms and whatever, it's like you, it's, that's what people do, man. And they don't care if it, they don't care if somebody like ends up killing themselves or whatever over it. They think I don't care because if you know if you have a big following, you just kind of go ah whatever and you leave it alone, 
or you or you respond reasonably to it and you say, hey, li- listen, this is what the guy said, and you put out the tweets and you say, this is what the guy said. Yo, fucking, if I see him, it's on site. If you want to be like that, fine. On site, motherfucker. But, you know, to try to just get people to destroy his life and whatever, I, you know, I don't understand that. I don't get it. But then again, maybe Bill did do something that I don't know about that was racist and crazy, and maybe he's some kind of thing that uh, I don't know about. But then again, you know, you could just say that about anybody nowadays. You know, everybody just fakes fucking triggers everything. And, oh, no, you said the F word a couple of times. So, you you know, it's like whatever. doesn't matter. You know? Yeah, Bill does, he does act like he knows everything and stuff. I've seen that before. Yo, uh, oh my God, an alert. Shit. Kyle Kale, thank you for uh, subbing to the channel, man. What's going on, Kyle? How you doing? Appreciate it, bro. Well, so again, my I gave my feelings on Raw. Like I said, you know, I think I said it all the other day, really, and... You know, and again, it just goes down to the, I think they wasted an opportunity. I think they had an extra 400 to 500,000 people watching them. They should have made an impact with the show. They should have had Stephanie get beat up by those women, by EO Sky and everybody, Bailey. Um, you know, and then I, I would have had, maybe you could have had Stephanie come out the next week and introduce that she's putting a team together or something. You know, then you could have brought Sasha Banks back. You know, I don't know. Whatever, but that was just one thing. I'd have Stephanie come out, get beat up by, uh, you know, Io Shirai and Bailey and them to start Raw, make a big bang. And then the United States title tournament begins right after that. And then Bianca cuts her promo. She cut at the beginning of Raw in the second hour of Raw. And then she gets her match against Io Sky announced later. Um, You know, there's that. And then there's... uh. Then there's other things I would have done, you know, and I don't remember now what I said last night, but I had another idea just to spice it up a little bit. So if you brought me the raw stuff on a page, you know, I look at it, I'm like, huh, you know, I would have added to those things. So I don't know that this to me was a good, it was a better raw than normal, like I said, but it wasn't anything you know, over the top or wild or, you know, didn't blow me away. So, you know, what are you going to do? We'll see what happens next week and see if they can keep this audience. I don't know if they can. I don't know if they can, man. But I know it's really hot down here, man. I got to get out of here. It's fucking hot as fuck. It's hot as balls down here. I, I I just I don't know why I decided I was gonna go live for a little bit tonight and uh man, it is hot in the basement right now. I don't know why it's hot in my office, but whew. It does it feels awful down here. Or I'm sick, one of the two. I don't know. Everyone is getting sick in my work, so maybe I'm sick. That'd be the greatest thing. It'd be good, you know. Take me out with COVID. Imagine if I died of COVID after all this two years two years and then I, I fucking pass away of COVID. That'd be, I mean, that'd be really bad for my family and kids, but Sean Ross Sapp would probably be happy about it. Somebody would be like, well, but he had kids, man. And Sean would be like, who gives a fuck? They're probably retards like him. That's what Sean would say. Cause he hates people. I don't know why. That guy hates people, man. I, I, it's amazing. It lets you blow him. I don't know why. I, I think he's, I think he's a cool. I think he's pretty good, and he's a good at what he does. He's, he always seemed like a good guy to me. But you know, this past year, two years, man, I have noticed that person is, you know, unless I'm wrong, and maybe he, I'm, I'm sure he thinks I'm a bad person too, and I've given him reason to be. But man. But I, I've tried to sort of say like, hey, let's, let's let's chat for a minute and like let's bury this real quick. But I don't know, man. The more I see out of him doing that stuff, 
Like, you know, making jokes on a show or somewhere or tweets is one thing. But, I mean, you really act like that in real real life, bro. A guy acts like that in real life. Like a weird person. It's weird. Well, at least somebody liked it, uh, Devontae. All right, well, I got to be up early tomorrow. I gave my thoughts on things. It's fucking right, man. Um, pretty hot as fuck down here. My, it's really hot right now. I wish Raw was two hours too, Joe. Shipley. What up, Ricky? How you doing, man? Fuck, it's hot down here. My computer is running slow. I can feel how my computer is ready to just pass out. It's so fucking humid and hot down here. My computer is just like, it sounds like it's dying. Oh, there's a mouse in my car again to yesterday. So I caught that mouse and, you know, now a week later, there's a, mu a mouse in my car again. So there's either a family of mice living in my fucking car or they're just coming in somehow and I don't know how. So that's kind of been miserable. Every day I wake up and go in the car and there's turds in my car. And it's like, all right, I've removed another mouse where what's, and there's nothing in the engine. I can't find a, there's no nest. There's no nothing. I don't know what the fuck is going on. They're not in the cabin filter area. None of the filters. Like I checked everything. So, and I thought, I thought definitely the last time when I caught that other mouse, I was like, oh, there was definitely one stuck in here by accident. He was probably stuck. But nope, there's another one. So that means there's more work to be done there. So that sucks. Um, I checked the trunk, man. Yeah, I checked everywhere. It sucks. I checked under the hood, too. Yeah, I checked the hood. I checked the battery. I checked the. I lifted up the plastic on the engine. Clash of the Castle might end up being a good pay per view. You might be right, Jeremiah. No doubt about it, man. Might be good. Might be a good show. Thank you guys for being here, man. I could have made this a video, but I decided to go live lot anyway. Glue traps underneath one of the wheels. Oh, man. Yeah, I might have to. I, I hate glue. I really hate glue traps. I hate hate them man i hate listening you ever walk in and hear a mouse get caught bro and the mouse is like eh, eh. oh i can't deal with it oh my god oh my god that scared the shit out of me oh it's raining man, it's raining, man. todd fair Before the show ends, a donation explodes from the king of monetize this and the wheel of Larry Funk, Todd Fair. Vince Scully died? Oh, shit. Join Wanda and think Roman will face for the title at WrestleMania. Will it be Three Rock or Cody or a Tribe Threat match? Ooh. You know, I honestly thought... So, what I thought was going to happen maybe is that Brock would end up winning the belt back. And um, we thought maybe Rock, Brock would win the belt back. But the, the plan all along to me was that Cody would face Roman for the titles. But... Like we said, The Rock is going to be a WrestleMania, then, you know, it, you, you wouldn't think, you're not going to waste that match. So maybe, maybe somehow Roman is going to lose the belts. I don't know, because man, if he's, it's going to be Roman versus The Rock 
at WrestleMania and Roman will beat The Rock. But we, we were discussing this a while ago that Roman doesn't need the belts then. He can just face The Rock and there's no need for the belts at that point. So I don't know, man. I, I'm confused. A originally what I thought was, well, you know what? Maybe Brock Lesnar will win the belts back and then Roman will face The Rock without a belt and then Brock will face Cody Rhodes. But as of right now, man, I'd have to just say that it's going to still be The Rock and Roman for the titles. So The Rock and Roman for the titles. Roman will beat The Rock. And then potentially the next year, Cody Rhodes will face Roman for the titles. So I, I don't know. I think it might be a while now because of Cody getting hurt. But a lot can happen in two years, man. I mean, that's crazy. Lest they split up the belts, Jerome. You're right. Lest they split up the belts. Um, Drew wins Universal Championship and Roman keeps the WWE Championship. Maybe. And then Cody Rhodes can face Drew McIntyre. You know, maybe something like that. Maybe. But doesn't Cody... Cody really wants the WWE world title, right? Because that's really the belt he talked about his dad not getting. That's the big belt, right? Um... Yeah, maybe Roman loses the belts and goes crazy and beats up the Usos and blames them all and, and whatever else. Uh, that That's a good point. Yo, Todd Fair, thank you, man. That was actually the first donation of the stream, man. That's crazy. It is late, you know, to stream at like almost mid, you know, 11 o'clock at night, man. I'm really tired. I just streamed because I was like, I better say something about this, you know. So thank you very much, man, for, for 20 bucks um, and for clicking the like button, everybody down below. I've got, I've been watching, um, you know, every year I watch Star Trek, the next generation, seven seasons, probably the all seven seasons. I love Star Trek so much. I watch it like every day <laughs> and my, my Leah is in one of her Star Trek moods. So she's been going to bed to Star Trek, the next generation every night, which I love. Cause that reminds me of being a kid. Um, and I had a dream last night that I had a three way with Captain Picard and Beverly Crusher. It was very very strange. Very strange. That I would never have expected that to be a dream, but it was last night. So very, very interesting. Todd Fair, thank you, man. Also, um I found out the uh, courtesy of um sadly of the goon earlier. I talked to the goon and uh, he informed me that um the former monetized this this is actually really sad, uh which you raised a piece of shit. Oh, shit. Second dono of stream. Come just donated a dollar. Thank you, come. Well, that will go right to my PayPal, so I'll be able to use that tomorrow. Thank you, come. I'll buy a cookie. Is that uh, former Monetize This Champion Bobbit passed away? Um, Which is super sad because he was a sweetheart. You know, um... I thought it was a fake because everybody was saying all these people died all last couple of months. People are like, this guy's dead. This guy's dead. Prince something is dead. I don't even know who that is. And they were like, this guy's dead. That guy's dead. And people were saying people are dead. And so I didn't believe it, but uh, apparently he really is passed away, um, which is crazy. And that makes three people now from my community here, three, three JCS originals. You know, I'll, uh, Real Talk, the Metaphor Messiah, passed away. Um, you know, Real Talk was one of our first callers on this show back in 2014 or 15 or whatever it was. Um, he was he used to call the original crew here when it was me and Tommy C and Dave. Uh, um, Real Talk, and so that was sad when we lost Real Talk. And then um, uh, Larry Funk died of covid after fucking living with a transplant liver for two years. And now, uh, Bobbit. And, you know, Bobbit's the first, uh, former monetize this champion, um, to be gone. So rest in peace to Bobbit, man. Uh, luck luckily, again, another guy I, I would speak with here or there. Um, see, I, I remember I, 
you know, talked to Bob at, uh, um, I think it was around December when I last talked to him or something like that. Sucks. Vin Scully's dead. Um, <laughs> Jesse James. I don't know how he died. We don't know. I don't know. Nobody knows. I mean, it's probably his, could be his, could be anything. Could be his weight. Could be a heart. Uh, could be, could be anything. But he was a sweet, sweet guy. He was very nice. You know. Oh man, it's just too bad, bro. It's, it's crazy to think that there's so many people that um do a little basketball dance off the know. concrete. I mean, I'm just so sick of you little meth head devil worshippers. Oh shit. I'll be honest, I'd like to take a big bite out of your face. Joe, I have had a separated right shoulder for like three months now. I can't imagine what Becky went through. Hope you're doing well. Love you, bro. Yeah, I mean, the good thing is that she was on full adrenaline the other night, right? Like she was on an, you know, adrenaline rush. But yeah, she must have been, that must have been bad. Especially once she started getting back to the back room. I mean, she must have been like, please stab me with Novocaine or whatever. Like, yo, give me an epidural. Like, <laughs> like that must have been crazy. You know, so, uh, just a, just a, you know, Becky's a badass for that, bro. But there's a lot of wrestlers, you know, that have, you know, worked through some crazy pain that, you know, pff, dude, you can't even, it's like, we can't even imagine that. I think I busted my ankle once. I pulled a hamstring, you know, and I've been in shit. You imagine separate the shoulder I think it popped back in didn't it but my god dude she must have been killed must have been killing her you know uh, you know Triple H you know tearing a quad in a match Goddamn Vince McMahon running into the ring tearing both quads I mean you know some of the shit that we've seen the injuries there's so many more I don't even remember them all until people bring them up and I go oh yeah I remember he did that I forgot I guess I didn't remember you know but Raw takes a step in the right direction. So that's a good, that's a good thing. Raw takes a step in the right direction. But I wish, again, like I said, I feel like it's a missed opportunity. And I told you why. It's not just, you know, me hating out of nowhere or, or just saying like, yeah, F them or anything like that. It's just that literally I believe they should have made a huge, huge splash the other night to keep this audience that you knew they were going to have, you know? We're gonna, they, they knew they were going to have a couple hundred thousand, if not more, viewers than normal. It's like, let's make an impact and an impression so that they come back. And I don't think they did that. They did it a little bit. And so, you know, I think some of the regulars watching appreciated it a bit. But again, like I said, it just wasn't a big enough impact for, for me to give it, a, you know, I should have been given a raw a seven or an eight last night. I would have taken a seven. If Raw had been a seven last night, that would have been awesome for me. But again, I I'm around a five. But it should have been more than that. Even I even me should have been more than seven. Should have blown us away. It should have been shocking and crazy. I don't know. But they didn't it, it was it wasn't. You know? You know, Ric Flair's last match on my channel did better than most other things that I've done this week. You fucking believe that? Like, I took I I I I I took a look at the fucking ratings, and they're unreal. Like, for for the Ric Flair's last match, like to get I got more I got almost I think we have almost got more viewership for Ric Flair's last match. Than for uh, SummerSlam. Let me see. I'll tell you in a second. Maybe SummerSlam still beat it, but it's close. 
Um, thanks for subbing, Johnny. Yeah, 16,000 views for SummerSlam and 15,000 for Ric Flair's mass last match. Damn. Very close. Very close to each other. Ric Flair's last match did did well. We even set a record in chat messages. For the like, we haven't had that many chat messages since 2020. It says for Ric Flair's last match. That's fucking crazy. Ninety-four percent of viewers are still watching around the thirty-second mark, which is above typical. Like I got all these alerts about it. So we really did well with that one. And just about everything all week, you know, to be honest, you know, it was a good week in viewership. So I want to thank you guys for making uh, the channel kick ass uh, this whole week. Uh, views are up over 250,000 views this month, which is higher than the, the last year. Over 50,000 hours of watch time. That's uh, 5,000 more than usual. Over 300 subscribers almost. 278 subscribers. That's uh, it. That's up by about 50, which that's not bad either. And uh, revenue is up as well. Revenue is up over $300 more this month than the past six months. So, thank you. Memberships are up as well. We had 25,000 views on Monetize This the other night. That's crazy. Monetize This, 25,000 views. A lot of that was uh, courtesy of uh, the, the drawing. It's been, uh, that was cool. So, uh, there you go. I'll do my Triple H State of the JCS. What up, Danny310? How you doing, man? Derek Can says, could have had something to do with it being on Sunday and not Saturday. That's a great point, Derek. That's a great point. In fact, it's too bad SummerSlam wasn't on Sunday because they probably would have had more people watch on Monday. Derek Hans with a great point. And in uh, in about in the next couple of days, I'll have the producers list back out again. By the way, too, I haven't had that because it's not caught up yet. Some people are still getting their Patreon updated or charged to, so gotta wait. Mm -hmm. You raised a piece of shit. I sent you a video on Ig via K9. Find it. Go check it out. LOL. And how was Jake doing? I talked to Jake today, and uh, luckily that lump thing that we talked about is not cancerous. So that thing that Jake had on his uh, uh, kidneys is not cancerous. So luckily Jake does not have that cancer. Was that John? Mo Who was that? Mr. Montgomery, thank you so much, man. People in California are getting robbed daily. No right to carry a gun and see what happens. Yeah, what's going on in California? Yo, it's California is turning into Brazil, bro. What am I watching, bro? Oh, I've seen this video before, bro. Dude, I've seen that video. That's old. That's like from What's a year ago name? or two. Dunkachino. It's a whole new oh game. shit, Todd Dunkachino. Fair. You want creamy goodness? I'm your friend. Say hello to my chocolate blend. Oh. Joe, do you agree with Jim Cornette that John Moxley is the worst pushed wrestler? He, I wouldn't say the worst, 
but he's not. John Moxley is not. Yo, the wrestling world's retarded. You know, Todd Fair, thank you for the ten dollars. Um, I don't really get it anymore with Moxley. He's not the guy that he used to be, kind of, but he's also just like. He's got a vibe and an intensity that I like, and he's good. But if I'm telling you, man, he like this guy's worth six million dollars or whatever it is. No way he's worth six million dollars at this point, you know, with what's going on. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't you raised it. a piece of shit. For some milk with your cookie. Oh, thank you, cock. Appreciate that, bro. My daughter came down to tell me a joke, and she said, uh, "What are you doing under there?" And I said, "What?" And she said, "What are you What are you doing under there?" And I said, "I don't know." She's like, you're supposed to say underwear. I don't know. I'm like, I don't know. I didn't get it. You're weird. This, like, <laughs> I don't know. No buttons. He's saying he's a shitty wrestler. That's getting the best push. Um, I, w I used to be a huge Moxley fan uh, or, you know, Dean Ambrose guy, you know, no doubt. But, um... Once he got the belt, that's w that's when I realized, oh no, you know, this guy isn't really what I thought he was. You know, John Moxley is like uh to me he's great, but he's not that You raised a piece of shit. Great. Corn Pop was a bad dude and also fuck the automatic Mustang cat fucker that is all first time donator. Whoa. Kyle Voorhees. Thank you for the 666. I'm sorry that the 666 donation didn't go off. I got to fix that. Thank you, uh, Mr. Kyle. I got to fix that, bro. I used to have a good 666. I got to fix it. I'm sorry. I will fix it. I keep saying that. I. It's like, you know, there's The Rock, there's Austin, there's Hulk Hogan, there's all these people. Then there's, then there's Bret Hart. Then there's Roddy Piper. Then there's Macho Man. Then there's... So many people above where John Moxley is, you know, like, and if you were to say, you know, what's John Moxley of this era? You know, is he Jake the Snake? He's kind of like a little bit like that in a way. He's not Jake the Snake. He's a different type of wrestler, but it would be like if a guy like that back in the day got six million dollars and got this huge push. Um, He's not he's not usually good with a belt. Because for some reason, I don't know what it is, but when he has a belt, it's almost like he carries it around like it's like it's almost like he's like holding this thing, but it doesn't matter. It's weird. I don't know. I don't know why how to explain it, but you know what I mean? Like he didn't feel like a champion, you know, for whatever reason, but he's been he's he's a guy I like. I like him, but it's just not it's like he's this top tier guy. Um. No, I don't think so. And he's not he's not a good guy to have the belt. That's what I do know. He's a guy who did not need the belt. And we have a and it and it showed I am so it showed when um when when he was Dean Ambrose and he won the title in WWE, he did not feel like a champion. He did not feel like the world champion. He was not good. I think this I think him with the title right now is the best he's looked with it, which is weird because it's like a Interim or whatever you want to call it. But let's relive the magic real quick. Oh, Stone Cold Steve Austin asked you a question. You're the WWE champion, Dean. <laughs> I want to know, did your dad touch you when you were younger? 
did your dad beat the shit out of you? Like, why did you want to become a WWE wrestler? Um, I don't, I mean, I don't know. I saw it on TV like everybody, I don't know, it's high school. <laughs> well, damn it, son, what I'm trying to say is like what brought, who made you passionate? What made you want to become a WWE superstar? Well, you know, I always liked, you know, Bret Hart and, you know, he was cool and, you know, was, well, well. Oh, all right, so you saw Bret Hart, you, you fucking, you were like, I want to do this, and then what you did, but what I'm trying to say is you had a tough life, like, where you didn't, your parents didn't live together, like, you kind of had a tough son, right? <laughs> um, I don't know why you're, yeah, I mean, like, I don't know, I guess I had a same kind of life like everybody else, I don't know. Well, damn it, son, now you're the WWE champion, what do you think when you're in the locker room? Like, do you go around making sure the boys are in order? Like, what do you want to do next with the title now that you're the WWE champ? You were trying to raise the bar? What are you trying to do? Um, you know, I don't know. It's just like I got this belt, and it's pretty cool. I mean, you know, I just got and fucking, I have sex with Renee Young. I don't know. God damn it, son, you are the WWE champion. Do you give a fuck about this business? Do you give a damn about what Stone Cold Steve Austin is saying to you? It's because it sounds like to me that you really couldn't give a damn. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. You saying like, I don't, like, whoa, like, I'm no disrespect. Like, I mean, are you trying to say I don't care? Like, about this? Whoa, like, what? Like, what are you talking about? Son, what? <laughs> Son, what the fuck are you saying? Are you the champion or not? You're the WWE champion, and yet you come on here like a crybaby bag of shit. What the fuck kind of champion is in the WWE? I mean, I, I don't know what you want me to say. I mean, like, I'm in a, I'm in somebody else's sandbox, and you know, I, just like, you know, I went out there with Brock Lesnar. He did the thing. I did the thing. You know, I, I, I really I wanted to do all these things, but I couldn't do them. So we just had the match we had. I guess I don't know. Oh, shit, my stomach, man. <laughs> Son, do you gosh. have a goddamn? What what Stone Cold Steve Austin wants to ask you is, do you have a set of balls? Because hell, son, if I went out there and had a half-ass match against Brock Lesnar like Dean Ambrose, who now is wearing the WWE Championship, son, I would have beat the living hell out of somebody in the back. I don't care if it was Triple H, Vincent K. McMahon, or somebody's ass wouldn't have been whooped by Stone Cold Steve Austin. Are you a <laughs> pussy? What is going on? I don't know. I don't, man, I don't fucking uh, fucking. I mean, what the fuck with that? That is the fucking representation <laughs> of what's wrong with with WWE. Oh damn it, son! You know what, Dean? Shut the fuck up, Dean. I got I got Jeff Hardy coming in here, Jeff. What is going on? I know they canceled <laughs> they canceled my podcast on the WWE Network because Stone Cold Steve Austin asked Triple H the why idea. they hate China. <laughs> uh, all I did was ask Triple H why they don't like China, and then she died, and then they couldn't figure it out. But damn it, Jeff Hardy, why don't you have a seat? Jeff, when are you going to have the broken gimmick? Well, you know, me and uh, me and Matt, we just want to... Uh... You know, we want to come in here. We want to have a good, as good a run as we can. I mean, we said, I said it to the WWE universe when we were here last time. You know, before, before I left, that you know, I'm going to be back. Absolutely, going to be back. And we, we're back here now. It's, it's great. You know, it's been perfect. Matt's happy. I'm happy. We're all, we're doing the thing. We're doing the team. You know, the fucking extreme. I, oh shit, that guy swear on here. I don't know. Goddamn fuck, you can say whatever the fuck you want. You can say dick. To cock, ball sack. You can even say fuck to the whores if you want. Jeff. Uh, yeah, well, anyway, then I want to get in seven car accidents while drunk. Oh, okay. By the way, I bet you know, I bet you no one would go up to Jeff Hardy and call him out. I bet you Sean Ross wouldn't go up to Jeff Hardy and get in his face at a convention and say, How dare you risk people's lives on the road, you sicko? Bet you wouldn't do that. Now, he'll just call other people he doesn't like homophobes and racists uh but uh yeah thank you guys for being here tonight man i had a shite load of fun and i will catch you tomorrow night uh for the aew review wednesday night uh, i'm tired peace out 
Yeah. Hey, thank you guys very much for signing back up on Patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show or download the Patreon app on your phone to listen to all the bonus shit that you can't hear on YouTube because YouTube's scared. <laughs> listen to it on Patreon. Yeah, daddy's home. Daddy's home. Wait a minute, that's Joe Cronin in the crowd. He just gave the finger to Kane. Joe Cronin gave the finger to Kane. What the hell's wrong with him? What is Cronin doing? He'll never get a job now. Biggest, most jacked guy, and please let me come. Oh. God, feed me Omega. Oh, God, I, God, give me the Young Bucks two on one. <laughs> oh, my God. God, feed me Omega. God, I God, give me the Young Bucks two on one. God, oh my let God. them be in the ring just ripping on the crowd. Oh, 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 God, feed me Omega. Be the Young Bucks two on one. Bucks two on one. Young Bucks two on one. Give me the Young Bucks two on one. Give me the Young Bucks two on one. Oh, God, I God. Give me the Young Bucks two on one. God, feed me Omega. Oh, 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 oh. God, Jack, give me guys, the young please, bucks two on one. Come. God, let them be in the ring, just ripping on the crowd. Oh, biggest, most jacked guy, and please oh. let me come. <laughs>